Greetings, greetings, greetings all, and welcome to another segment of Michelle Speaks with a Z. If you hide it, you can't heal it. With me, your host of the hour, Michelle Portier. As you all know, Michelle Speaks is a platform that provides an opportunity to highlight those that have encountered tragedies, and they've turned those tragedies into triumphs. They've harnessed the pain, harnessed the lessons learned, and they are now giving back to those in their community, in their sphere of influence. And in this instance, with my very special guest, who I'm honored to share the platform with today, Miss Lindsay Bivens, she has the honor to influence others globally. And so without further ado, I'm gonna turn it right over to Miss Lindsay Bivens. I wanna thank you so much, Lindsay, for agreeing to share space with us today and share some nuggets of wisdom with those that are tuning in, especially in this new year we are. 20, how many days in? It's what, 28? <laughs> 28 days into the new year. And you're going to be sharing some nuggets. We're just going to have a kind of a girl talk conversation mm -hmm. on transformation and, and resetting and what that means for this new year. Because we're still early into the new year. So without further ado, thank you so much, Lindsay, for joining us. And welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much thank for the invitation. Thank you for having me. Uh, I'm really excited about the opportunity to kind of just talk through, share my heart, and uh, again, just be able to bounce back and forward uh, with you and, and kind of synergize in the moment. But I'm excited to be here. I'm excited about 2021. Despite all that we've been through this past year, I am excited and looking forward with so much anticipation and um, just gratitude. Right. And that is the word right there. That is the word of, I think of the, of the season is gratitude. I am in a posture of gratitude, a posture mm -hmm. of Thanksgiving and just a posture of just being so grateful mm -hmm. for the things mm -hmm. that God has brought me through, um, is bringing me through and some of the things that he's brought you through that you're going to share. And so um, thank you again. And so, you know, I've had the honor of, of knowing Lindsay, um, over a, over a number of years, I've, I've followed her, you know, in her her conference, My Message Matters, um, as well as the author's pen. She's a very accomplished woman, um, publisher, speaker, producer, among many other things, entrepreneur extraordinaire. And so, for those of of my listening audience that do not know who Lindsay is, can you share with them who is Lindsay Bivens, personally, professionally, and spiritually? Hmm. And hello, hello to those two and Miss Shaquilla Ransom and Sonia Bronley. Hello, hello, hello. Hey, hey, that's my good girlfriend. What's up, Shaquilla? <laughs> so um, who am I personally, professionally, spiritually? This is such a loaded question. <laughs> but I would say uh, just personally, you know, I, I'm me. I, I'm, I'm a genuine person. I am... I'm very passionate. I think that would probably, you know, that would probably describe me to a T by, you know, anybody's definition might include passionate. So I'm really passionate about everything I do from family yeah. to community, to ministry, to my work yeah. and supporting authors. I'm very passionate. Uh, I'm very much a visionary as well. Uh, so in terms of the types of things I gravitate to, they are much bigger ideas. Uh, very much looking at how I can be of support and in service of, you know, the collective and all of humanity. And so a lot of the things I put my hands to and my heart to are connected to being able to serve in that way. That's who I am, you know, personally, professionally. Uh, as I mentioned, I support authors at The Author's Pen. Again, that is The Author's Pen, where I get to, you know, uh, support people with powerful stories, people yeah. who have impactful messages for the rest of the world. And I, I get to show up in, in the scope of their project by way of book coaching, book publishing, book marketing. And I love the idea of kind of coining the phrase chief book curator, because really what I do with book projects is get in the details. I get all the way in the details in terms of what that, you know, the scope of a project, but also what this project is going to mean to that individual, to, to the author. How is it going to be fulfilling? How is it going to feed them long-term? 
on a, um, again, from a fulfillment perspective. So that's professionally um, and spiritually. I'm just a, a woman of faith. I, I love the Lord with, you know, all of my being. Um, I have had the privilege to serve kind of in a ministry capacity since 2010 when I first realized the call of my life to minister the word of God and, and carry forward the gospel of Jesus Christ. And, you know, the rest, as they say, is history. I've been blessed to accomplish, you know, different things, to travel different places, to connect with amazing people. But at the end of the day, doing showing up in my life um, and connecting with other people on the premise of being able to serve, you know, humanity and, and be a, a solution for other people, that's what's fulfilling for me. Well, that in a nutshell, for those who don't know Lindsay, that's just um, a spotlight or just a sneak peek at who she is. And as we go along in this conversation, you're going to learn even more about how phenomenal Lindsay is. And, you know, in our conversations prior to this and even in other things that we've attended together, Lindsay, there was a resonating theme. You know, you said that you were a woman of faith and, and I resonate with that because I am. And, you know. Everything I do is founded upon that. My personal mission statement, I believe everyone should have one, is I'm a woman of faith, living life audaciously in mm -hmm. spite of seeing mm -hmm. the invisible, doing the impossible, and inspiring others to do the same. And often mm -hmm. on this journey called life, we find our passion, we're, fu we're fueled by our passion because of pain points that we've encountered along our line, along the way. And so I know with you, you are so passionate about sharing people's the details and their journey and making sure you're getting down into the nuts and the crevices and the bolts and bringing that out as a way of showing others, no matter what you've been through, mm -hmm. it doesn't determine where you end up. And so can you share with us a little bit about your journey to transformation, to becoming who you are right now, even though it's not going to be who you end up, but just mm -hmm. on this journey to where you are right now, what was the thing that caused you to want to do what you do, the My Message Matters, the mm -hmm. Authors Kid, and all the other things that you do. Um, and mm -hmm. how has that, how have you been impacted by that? You ask loaded questions, Michelle. I'm like, ooh, that's so, ooh, I don't know how to package that in a few words. Uh, <laughs> I'm but, precept of on precept. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yes, uh, but you know, my experiences and kind of, are there a few pivotal, moments that led me to launch the author's pen, my message matters, uh, and even ministry, because ministry is really, it's a big part of everything that I do. Ministry shows up in my business. It shows up in my message matters. It shows up in my relationships. So my love for the Lord, um, my devotion to God and really surrendering my life to God is really the thing that is undergirding everything else that I do. Um, in terms of the author's pen, so if we were to go back to launching a business, um, you know, some years ago, I am a domestic abuse survivor. OK, so I was in a, a, a an abusive relationship um, and coming out of that relationship, I began to journal, you know, just really simply. Never had an idea to write a book, never wanted to start a business. These were not any of my aspirations in life. Uh, but I, I went through a difficult season where I, you know, found myself in, a, in an abusive relationship. And God blessed me to survive and, and granted me, you know, life after abuse. And in the in the scope of or on my journey of healing and really working on myself and processing what I had been through. I just journaled and, you know, over a few years time, I kind of went back to those notebooks. I had a, a stack of notebooks that I had accumulated. I went back and started reading some of what I had written in my healing process. And I thought, wow, this was powerful. And it, it still ministered to me. Um, and I thought, OK, I need to share this with other people. And to start, it was just feeling a nudge from the Lord to share my work with other people. So I took a step forward and I decided to publish that book. I hired a company who did a wonderful job helping me package it. I got my box of books and then nothing happened, you know? So here I am met with another, okay. It was a realization that this was way back in 2012. <laughs> but um, at that point, I realized that 
you know, I had tunnel vision to just birth it and share it, but I had not really given a lot of thought or forethought to what it was going to do after it was, you know, how I would impact people after that. Uh, and interestingly, God uses me like that. It's usually a need, something I experience personally. And then I get to see how other people, I get to see other people in that. I automatically went to not how I felt. I went to, I wonder how other people feel just right. like me. And so yeah. it stirred within me a new sense of purpose. At the time I was working in corporate America in the mortgage industry, I had done so for about 12 years. But when I had the experience of walking through the process of publishing my book, it stirred something in me and it gave me a sense of purpose uh, to be a solution for people like me you know, who had something powerful to say and maybe a God ordained word to share, you know, in, in, in printed form. And that there was something else that needed, you know, that people needed separate from the product. They needed vision. They needed clarity. They needed a strategy. They needed support, you know, and that's where the author's pen was birthed. It was birthed from a concept of I want to help people like me. Um, show up in the world and do it differently and do it better. And, you know, fast forward in the process of launching the author's pen, I ran into another hurdle, right? As right. you know, such as life. <laughs> but, you know, yes. Obstacles along the way. Absolutely. And, and with the <laughs> obstacle, um, you know, that looked like launching that business and my family shortly after being relocated to uh, Houston, Texas. So I'm born and raised in Jacksonville and God, you know, opened the door for my family to transition to another region. Um, and moving there, I didn't know anybody and I had this budding business and nothing was happening. And then that kind of sent me into the space of what now? Mm -hmm. And did I hear you clearly, Lord? Did you call me to this business? Am I someone who can really affect change in my industry? Can I really be a solution for people like me who have a powerful story and maybe they don't have all of the other stuff they need? But in the course of walking through that, now it became not a vision challenge, but a kind of business challenge, you know, mm -hmm. and maybe even a personal development challenge. Now I had to learn stuff about business I didn't know at the time. Um, but you know, that, go ahead. You know, I often tell people that um, attempt to launch out into what God has called them to do, and they try to have everything in order and everything in place. Because, yes, God is a God of order, but He's also a God of faith. And as we continue to step out, then He will meet us in that. And you cannot separate the personal from the professional. You know, I tried it, you know, and I resonate with you. I believe that's why we resonate so well. Because I couldn't try to separate it. My analytical, logical mind, and then based on what God was speaking to my heart, you know, there was that 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 constant war until you, you know, until I surrendered, like you said, you know, and this year, my hashtag for the year, I have one every year, is yielded and surrendered. And so with that, with all that you've encountered, you know, I share that history with you of being a domestic violence survivor mm -hmm. and wanting to be a solution to those like me. So in that process of transitioning from I've survived this, I want to share this and into entrepreneurship and how to marry all that. What were some of the things that you encountered, some of the challenges, you know, even in the entrepreneurial realm and then, you know, trying to balance family in work life and all of that? What were some of those challenges? You know, I think you hit on it already, Michelle. And one of the, the main challenges then and still now is just balance, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, I also share this, you know, when it seems appropriate, but I think a lot of times we underestimate how much something is going to cost. Ah. We think of cost in terms of financial cost. What is this going to cost me financially to do this, to make this happen, to realize this dream, to manifest this vision? But a lot of times we don't count up the cost in terms of what is this going to take in terms of my time? What is right. this going to take in terms of my energy? How is this going to shift what I can give myself to? You know, how is this going to impact the, my responsibilities and my, my ability to manage my responsibilities. So I think that has been a really, you know, just an honest teaching moment for me. It 
walking through the process of going from author to entrepreneur to uh, visionary for my message matters to now evolving and growing and doing other things. That has been something I've applied to everything, you know, kind of present tense. I've taken that nugget and carried it forward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so in that, what were the day to day things that you had to put in place, you know, mm -hmm. for the family and did you share the vision with them, you know, so that they would be on board or was it something they just supported you in blindly? Um, what what was a day in the life like for Lindsay making that transition from getting the vision and, and you know, putting it together and implementing it? Mm -hmm. In terms of day to day, you know, of course, I, I am married. So sharing it with my husband was something that was natural for me to do. Number one, to have his support and make sure we are in agreement. Uh, again, something I've learned is that there's no such thing as you taking on some big project without it impacting your family. You know, and really every risk I've taken, I've not taken the risk alone. I've taken the, the risk and made the, the investment with my husband. So we've you know, even if his investment was simply supporting me, we've taken the risk together, you know, and, and what that looked like, you know, launching the business at first, nothing really happened quickly with the business. I wasn't generating consistent income when I started and my husband supported me in a season where I couldn't necessarily contribute to the family and I continued to believe. And it's so interesting you asked this question because very recently, maybe last month, it's been maybe a month or so, we sat down and had like a really honest conversation and I kind of broke down in tears and I told my husband, thank you. Like it, it just, it clicked in a way it's not ever clicked before. And that was to say to this man of God that I have been blessed with, you know, blessed to be his wife. I looked him in the eyes and I said, thank you. Because there's so many times I took gigantic leaps of faith. I, I mean, I poured my soul, my time, my energy, my effort into things that God called me to. All the while, my husband gave me space to. He didn't criticize me. He didn't judge me. He didn't say, you know, well, we have this to do at home. And we have he always allowed space, understanding in times where the, the average human being wouldn't be understanding. Um, and, and for that, you know, I realized that all of the risk and the steps of faith that I've taken, I realized my why, you know, I feel like God gifted me with a deeper understanding of my why. My success in this now is not just about a sense of fulfillment for me on a personal level or spiritual level. My success is also connected to my husband's dreams because he gave me space and opportunity to build and develop something. And I believe that this vision is going to sow into the bigger dreams that he has because he allowed me opportunity to do it. That is awesome. Mm -hmm. That's, I'm glad that you pinpointed that and stated that because mm -hmm. I believe sometimes we can, we in general, mm -hmm. we can receive a word from God about something we're called to, we're purposed to, and we can run headlong into it, not taking into account, you know, <laughs> if you have a spouse, you know, sure. um, not taking into account whether their support, we run headlong and well, God said, and if God said it, he's gonna bless it and everything else mm -hmm. will fall into line. No, you still have to communicate mm -hmm. that and it still has, you still have to be in alignment. And mm -hmm. so you said something interesting about underestimating the cost and not monetarily, mm -hmm. but, Personally, the energy, managing time, balancing everything. Mm -hmm. During that time that you were doing that, was there ever a time that you were doubting or wondering, you know, and did you have any insecurities about what it was that you were sharing? And, you know, walk us through that. Mm -hmm. Oh, doubting, uh, insecurity. Yes, yes, and yes. Okay. <laughs> and I say that laughing because... You know, looking back on it and, and just being in a space where I can be totally transparent and honest, there were many times, okay, countless, I could not count them if, you know, if God gave me a flash and, and took me back to every moment, I think that it would be innumerable how many times I felt inadequate, so how many times I felt insecure. Uh, one thing I can say about me and, you know, I say this, you know, giving God the glory, I'm a faith walker, okay? I just... 
I'm action oriented and I am a faith walker and I walk by faith even if I am terrified in the moment. Hallelujah. And I tell God, thank you for that. So yes, I have, there have been times where I doubt. I'm like, okay, Lord, I heard you and I don't stepped out here now and I feel uncomfortable. And I think, you know, a, a an honest evaluation or assessment of what that is, I would say it is, it is the act of stepping forward by faith and yeah. feeling extremely uncomfortable because you are outside of your comfort zone. You are outside of the realm of what I can do alone. And you're stepping into a realm of, I need God to manifest and to realize a God vision. And I have seen that happen over and over in my life. And I can attest to that, you know, both personally and, and seeing and watching your growth. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I tell people all the time, you have to get comfortable with being uncomfortable because if you're comfortable, it's not God. You know, <laughs> if, you're, if you're comfortable, it's your vision. It's not the mm. vision that God has given you. Um, mm. So tell me more about your why. Mm. You know, our points actually help us to find passion and that causes us to pursue purpose. Mm -hmm. So what, what, it, what was your why? You know, to start out my why, was really connected to service. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that has been consistent. You know, I think over time, my why has grown into, I feel like God again has gifted me a deeper level of understanding, but it's ultimately in service to other people. I started the business, you know, I'm very much a heart centered entrepreneur. I started it because I wanted to quote unquote make money because I was really just looking to be for other people what I didn't have. Exactly. I understood the pain. I understood the frustration. I understood the disappointment of having something that God told you to birth and, and birthing it. And then you're like now feeling disappointed about it. So I understand what that is. And I feel like God allowed me, I know God allowed me to walk through that process to be an answer, a solution, a support for people like me. So my why has been service to other people because every author that I get to touch, every project I get to touch in that way, I feel like God has given me the grace to support them in, in rewriting the narrative of what's possible for their God-ordained message. And in that way, you know, I, I'm a midwife for it, you know, I, and, uh, you know, it's different between, you know, there's a difference between kind of just doing something and slapping it together, throwing it together and getting in the details and nurturing and laboring over something with someone. So service is it undergirds my why. And as you were sharing, I'm reminded uh, it brings to mind the scripture, Isaiah 66 and nine, you know, would I bring you to the point of delivery and not allow you to give birth? And mm -hmm. you perfectly summed it up when you said, you know, I'm a midwife of sorts, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, helping others to bring to birth the vision that God has given them. And so, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. I just love, love, love what you're doing and how mm -hmm. you stepped out, you know, by faith and bravely took it on because God said and you answered and said, here I am, send me. Yeah. You know, many, many, many people can, can learn from that and glean from that. And I'm just so glad that you were um, faithful and obedient to move mm -hmm. when God said move. And so I kind of want to switch gears, you know, mm -hmm. because we were having a conversation about some of the things, the transformation that you 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 are going through and, and have gone through with even within the last few months, um, getting back to the to the to the message, which is the reset. Yeah. And so what has been the reset over mm -hmm. the last couple of months? Um, especially, you know, all relationships are impacted and all relationships are important and the relationships are either going to help you as you pursue purpose or they're going to hinder you mm -hmm. so especially the relationships we have with not our spouses but mm -hmm. women because you know we're supposed to uplift one another support one another you know the older women are to pour into the younger women and so in all of that take us on that journey mm -hmm. through this transformative process even within the last few months Wow. So transformation, again, is, you know, when I think of it, it's it, it, it there's so many nuances and I feel like that's a, a something that can be in depth. But in short, I will say in the last few months, I've really been on this 
space in the space of allowing God room mm. to simply be God in my life fully, completely, you know, and respond. I feel like it's been a in in a sense, kind of like a surrender, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, in 2020, just walking through that year, the pandemic, all of these things happening, but that stillness was so meaningful for me. I felt like God was saying, come on home, baby, sit down. Let me sit with you. You know, let me talk with you. Let me love on you. And that's what it was for me. And in the closing months of last year, you know, I did, a, you know, you came and spoke at the event with me, but the reset virtual event. And, and that was really just connected to what God was speaking to me throughout last year, which is we God has pushed a reset button in the spirit and he is setting some things in order. And when I say some things that included me, too, he's setting some things in order in my spirit. He's setting some things in order in terms of my perspective, how I see myself how I, you know, show up in the world, how I touch other people. So in that way, uh, reset was very personal, but I also understood it was something that we were all experiencing um, as a whole. So these last few months have really been, you know, a lot of quiet time, a lot of prayer um, and a lot of, you know, just letting, you know, allowing space and letting go. It's been a lot of that for sure. So what are some of the things that have been have been reset, you know, and, and how have they impacted how you mm-hmm. used to show up versus how you show up now? Oh, you know? yeah. Uh, wow. So I love this part of what shifted for me. I feel like in the last few months, I've had to come face to face with uh, a spirit of shame, you know, and, and you know, sometimes you don't know that's showing up in your life. Right. But again, just sitting still being prayerful. Um, but the spirit of shame, like realized I was still carrying shame connected to things that have happened in my life over the years. You know, I have, you know, a separate from domestic violence, you know, just dealing with violation early on, dealing with abandonment, a lot of really you know, hurtful things happened to me over the the course of my life. And I really, I sat down and I had a, you know, I had a moment and it came to reading a book, actually a book I've had for 15 years, sat on my bookshelf for 15 years. And I think I kind of thumbed through it and I was like, "Mm, I ain't ready for this. That was, somebody gave me that book 15 years ago. Um, Brother Arvis from my church in Jacksonville, Florida. He gave me that book 15 years ago. I picked it up a few months ago and I, as I read it, I, I felt the weight lifting off of me. And I, I identify that I've been carrying some of that shame and releasing the shame also meant that I no longer have to be ashamed, present tense, that I'm no longer willing to be ashamed of any part of my story. You know, I walk through, you know, even just challenges in relationships, Michelle, and even having challenges in a way felt shameful for me. Right. It felt shameful. And I realized I'm like, I've been attacked in certain ways or I've been, you know, criticized. And, you know, it felt, you know, um, almost like I couldn't handle being criticized or I couldn't handle. But sitting down and allowing God to love on my soul and show me part of myself I wasn't willing to look at. I realized it that the reason some of those things hurt me deeply is because I was still holding on to shame and what they did was dug around in my shame. And I said, Lord, I'm no longer willing to hold on to it. Hallelujah. I released that. Okay. So that's one of the things God has blessed me with recently. And you said, and you said you were able to release it. What were the, some of the things that you identified that you were feeling ashamed about? Cause I'm sure that, you know, those listening in can, can kind of resonate with that. And, and if you're, you're open to sharing. Yes. Look, let's do it, Michelle. <laughs> let's go, <laughs> let's go let's in go. here. Okay. So some of the things I had to release shame for was even just how I show up in relationships. You know, uh, I had people kind of criticize me about being talkative. That is me. Okay. <laughs> you know, and I, I used to apologize for it in a way or jokingly kind of, you know, just to ease into relationships sometimes, but I'm very communicative. God gave me this voice because I have an assignment in the earth. Okay. And, and, and a lot of times in relationships, 
it's not, you know, even if I'm quote unquote dominating or it feels as if I'm dominating a conversation to another person, the truth right. is I enjoy other people's perspectives and, you know, it, it stimulates me and very um, naturally I'm communicative. So when people experience me that way and use that as an attack, I realized that hurt me. Right. And the reason that hurt me is because in a way I felt ashamed for being the way that I am. I was teased or talked about. I got in trouble in school for talking too much in grade school. Right. But me talking a lot, you know, and people even. And let's go here, Michelle, we're going to tell the truth. Even people you think who claim Christ just like you, other people of faith. And then, you know, and they talk about, you know, you need to be quiet. Or you need, but really, you're asking me to be something other than the way God set, you know, other than the way I'm set up, you know. So you I know, felt a like lot of time, a lot of times. A lot of times, well-meaning, well-meaning or not, of Christians, mm -hmm. um, people in the faith, take mm -hmm. the, the, the word out of context to use mm -hmm. it for their own purpose. And I don't yes. know if you were referring to that scripture, you know, women are to be silent. Yeah. Um, but it's it's often taken out of context. And, mm -hmm. you know, conversation prior to as we were preparing for today, mm -hmm. we talked, I talked, shared about, you know, that very thing, you know, about being being a voice and, and using your voice. And 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 I go back to this. I believe the three things that people desire, especially women. Because often, you know, we're not accepted, you know, for who we are. And so we try to conform, you know, to the expectations mm -hmm. of others. We want what everybody desires to give and receive mm -hmm. love, to be seen and to be heard. And yes. often that's not that's downplayed because we we are natural nurturers. So we want to make sure everybody else is taken mm -hmm. care of. Everybody mm -hmm. else is heard. But how do you do that? without compromising the voice that God has given you to be, to be a mouthpiece. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, mm -hmm. it seems like you are coming into the fullness of that and being able to embrace the Lindsay that God created to be the voice and find mm -hmm. that balance. That's it from what you're sharing. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I have had, I've gone through waves. So, you know, I know the theme today is transformation. I believe transformation is something that does happen in waves, you know, uh, that God is continually transforming us into the image of his dear son. We are being transformed. Um, and and there have been past seasons, you know, you know, where I felt very confident about certain things, you know, in terms of being able to speak and show up and stand up. Um, and, and be a voice in the earth. I, I've never had a problem with speaking up. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I've never had a problem with speaking up. Um, it was being attacked for that or being called my in character and integrity being attacked. People kind of uh, finding me for parts of me that are very authentic, which is being being a voice, you know. Um, so being attacked for things like that, it, it hurt me, but it it called me in a in a healthy way because God works all things together for good. But it called me to a place to go sit with that again. And what I was gifted was understanding. Well, that the reason you even cared at all, or the reason that hurt or bruised your ego, right? Is because you got some shame work to do. You got to let go of that shame and be willing to step forward unapologetically, you know, and, and understand that some people may not be able to receive you the way you set up what you are saying, your message. There will be people that come along and, and they feel strongly about that. And that is okay. Exactly. And I don't have to take that as a personal attack. I release it. I, those are the people that you're called to, you know. Right. That's nice. So, I just, I just love that you're just so present mm -hmm. and so fully um, embracing what God is doing in this season yeah. of transformation, which I believe is a lifelong thing. You know? Yes. Yeah. Continually working out all that He's called us to do until He returns. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of us making the choice and the decision to be comfortable in where we are, continue mm -hmm. to want to grow. And so um, how have you, now that you understood what that shame was and you've identified it, have you been able to identify that by that in, the, in other people as you, as you encounter them? 
And what, how did you deal with the abandonment or are you still, is that something you're still dealing with? You know, that's a good question. I'm still working through some parts of the abandonment. And when I say still working through it, you know, I'm in a really healthy place. I'm really self-aware. I am actively, you know, caring and loving myself in a way that is necessary. <laughs> uh, so I, I, when I feel like I need a break, I take a break. When I feel like I'm, you know, and even though I'm very communicative, there are times where, you know, interacting with people can feel like overstimulation. So yeah. I, I read that. I'm aware of how I feel. I have to check out, back up, sit down. <laughs> so in that way, I'm in a really good space. Um, but in terms of abandonment, I think it's something, you know, and I think you uh, you mentioned this when we spoke the other day about healing is a process. Yeah. So I'm allowing myself grace. You know, God is a grace giver. I'm taking a page out of God's book and I'm following his lead and I'm giving myself grace. And I am beyond the place of claiming to be whole and healed, right? Because I, God has elevated my understanding. I'm giving myself grace because I understand some things happen over the process of time. And I am good with that, Michelle. I'm so good with it. Look, I realize that some people can claim to be healed and whole and be the very opposite of that, right? But I'm okay because I think a part of that has been you know, whether it be society or the church or however, or the way we, we've been raised, I believe that we have taken on this idea and we shame people. We, we talk bad about them. We, 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 we judge them, people who are going through a healing process. And those are things I feel like I'm more aware of. Yes. I can identify that when I see it. Uh, I, and I don't have to judge them or attack them, but I understand that I am no longer in that place. What kind of world are we living in that we shame other people for the, the things they are still healing through? We, we shame them for their process. And when I say we, I'm not talking about you. And right. I. Yes. You yes. You, just... said, you said something that was mm -hmm. profound. Um, the process and a lot of people claiming to be healed and whole and they're not, you know, and as I always say, healing is mm -hmm. a journey. It's not mm -hmm. a destination that we ever arrive at because mm -hmm. there's, there's layers and levels of that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, though God does provide miracles, which are instantaneous, mm -hmm. healing is a process. Mm -hmm. And those, even myself at one time claiming to be whole, mm -hmm. I'm still in a healing process, but mm -hmm. healing and wholeness are two different things. I may be whole in certain areas and aspects of my life, mm -hmm. but certain areas I'm still in that healing process. Mm -hmm. And so that is one of the other things that are so resonated with you mm -hmm. with. So with that being said, mm -hmm. how have you used this process and how do you use that process when you come across someone, you know, because you're sensitive to what you've come yeah. out of and you're sensitive yes. to what you feel from. If you see where they are, how do you meet them where they're at? if they're who you're called to and you'll know. Yeah. Yeah. In terms of, and if I understand your question, this is more about kind of how you navigate relationships. Right. No. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like, you know, something that I have, you know, God has really blessed me to work through just in recent, you know, my recent history is to. Miss Sheila is saying hello to you. Hey, Miss Sheila. <laughs> Look, I, I feel like God has blessed me to, I think the self-awareness is the most important part, right? Because, you know, knowing yourself and being good with you first, I think it really just creates, it's a baseline for how we interact with other people. So I would say a part of me navigating relationships well, present tense, is making sure I'm good with Lindsay first. You know, some of the things that God has brought me out of separate from that shame was there was a bit of people pleasing in me. There was a bit of, you know, looking for validation. And it's so funny because it it kind of like, oh, I, I don't like that. But I realized that was a part of something I didn't like in me. And I would often see it in other people, you know? So it, that's something God has blessed me to work through. Like, look, I no longer seek validation from people. If people give me a compliment, I can receive it, but I am not waiting and hanging on a string and holding my breath for people to say that I'm anybody of value in this world because my value is in God and he's revealed that to me. I don't need anybody to do it. 
Um, in terms of relationships, I feel like, um, you know, something that is really clear to me in terms of who you're for, I think your pe people that you have an assignment for, there is this mutual reciprocity in the spirit, you know? So again, this is a part of, I feel like what God has given me revelation about. There's something that we do to feed each other, you know, on a very energetic, spiritual kind of level. Um, it doesn't mean that we're all outwardly giving the same thing, right? And a good example is that it would be kind of like a mentor-mentee relationship. Maybe my mentor, using one of them as an example, she she's a sounding board for me. I talk to her. I share my ideas. I share where I'm struggling or where I need to work through something. And she's, you know, in response, sharing her you know, giving me feedback, right, in a healthy way. And maybe we're not giving each other the same thing, but we are feeding each other something good, you know? So that's a, a spiritual reciprocity. I believe that happens in relationships that are um, God-ordained and in relationships, even if they're seasonal too, I think mm -hmm. you, you, you're you a blessing to each other in a way. I think something that I've learned and I'm more clear about is when that is up, you know, when that time is up, you know, I think, again, you can you can feel that. I think you have a sense of that um, mm -hmm. when, you know, you are you, you can no longer serve somebody or be a support to them. I think that really brings you to a place where you have to question the nature of the relationship, you know, and, and you don't go ahead. Yeah. We kind of touched on that yeah. also talking about um, being sensitive and trusting mm -hmm. That, that inner radar, that intuition, the Holy Spirit, however mm -hmm. you want to label it or classify it. Mm -hmm. Because I believe for people that have encountered trauma, mm -hmm. um, we, we we begin to mistrust yes. that little feeling or that radar that goes up. So what you were sharing earlier about becoming more self-aware yeah. um, and trusting that to know, you know, when the season is up, if it is seasonal, yeah. to know if that's your mentor or mentee, because we, we mm -hmm. should always have, have both in mm -hmm. our life at all mm -hmm. times. Mm -hmm. And so you know, with you, I just see, you know, just you blossoming and you blooming and mm -hmm. you've always been phenomenal. You know, I haven't had the opportunity of meeting you face to face, mm -hmm. but I feel as, as I've already met you, you know, yeah. in a sense, face to face and, and, mm -hmm. and spiritually. And mm -hmm. so with all of that, what has been the key um, to your success and your stability in mm -hmm staying on the path, even with the things that are being revealed, you know, healing from the shame, healing from mm -hmm. the abandonment, um, ensuring that the people that are in your life, you know, letting go of the people pleasing and the need for yeah. validation. What has been the key to your success in that and your stability? The key to success and stability. Um, so I want to say this because I believe it's going to bless somebody. This whole idea of stability. OK, maybe it's been instability. <laughs> I'm laughing because, you know, I just want to be authentic and transparent in this moment because I absolutely I have, you know, look back over my life and I see, you know, I can point back to times where I was really concerned with how I looked, you know, how I did things or how the appearance I gave, I wanted to seem like I had it all together. And that is the idea, you know, giving kind of a false sense of security because that's insecure, right? I can absolutely point back to times where I was insecure, but can I help somebody like forgive yourself, acknowledge that, Forgive yourself for the times you've been insecure. And the truth is there are people out here who have an appearance of having it all together and they don't either. How do we know? We can see people lifted up in high places who are not well. We see people in high places, you know, who, who go through seasons of challenge. Such is life, you know? So for me, it was kind of just coming to a point where I'm throwing away the idea that I have to look perfect. I have to, you know, you know, have a certain, you know, image about me in order to to seem successful. I don't want to seem successful. I want true success. Exactly. And for me, true success is being healthy, having a healthy family, a healthy marriage, you know, being healthy spiritually in my place in God. That's what success looks like for me. It's being able to serve the people God has called me to serve in business and in the marketplace. That's success. 
Forget a look and an appearance. And that's the place I'm in in my life. You can keep the appearance and you can keep everything else that looks like that. And when I say that, I felt like I also went through a process of just letting go of, you know, and I say this with love, just letting go of relationships that required that or, you know, that were built on that. I know they were built on faulty foundation and right. having to be OK with people seeing the space that I am in right now and saying I don't want anything to do with her. I am good with that. I'm good with people deciding they don't like this version of me. I'm good with people. Look, some people are still judging you for things in your past. I'm good with that, too. You know, they can hold on to their perception or belief about me connected to 10 seasons ago. I'm good with that, too, because I'm no longer holding on to that shame. I'm no longer holding on. If they want to hold on to the shame they wield in my direction, hallelujah, that is their business, but it no longer impacts my life. And I'm good with it. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. That's a good place to be in. And I, I definitely resonate <laughs> with that as well. You know, um, there yes. was a time where I was concerned about other people's perception of me, mm -hmm. um, you know, other people's perception. There was a time where people, you know, would say, you know, they thought I was very high maintenance when, when in essence, you really don't know me. I may look high maintenance, but what mm -hmm. are you looking at? You're only mm -hmm. looking at the surface that's so superficial. Right. And at this time and season in my life, I don't need superficial relationships. I need relationships that are enriching. I need relationships that are challenging and charging me to grow because iron sharpens iron. And I need relationships where, uh, what was this? I, I had a conversation earlier today. And in that conversation, I was stating um, to a sister friend of mine, um, I can't even remember what was said, but it'll come back. But it's so relevant to what we're talking about now. Mm -hmm. If I am not an asset to your life, then yes. I'm a liability. If I'm not an asset, I'm a liability. And what do you do with liabilities? Mm -hmm. You cut them off. Yes. Not that you're disconnecting from the person, but you're just you may be mm -hmm. distancing the relationship. Mm -hmm. Um you may be distancing the access. But mm -hmm. if you are not in alignment with where I'm going and what God has called me to mm -hmm. do. How can any two walk together unless they agree? And that's in any relationship, not Simple. just yes, any relationship. And yeah. so tell me about one of your most defining moments. Hmm. Defining moments, I would say when to launch my message matters, that was really defining for me. Uh, it was defining because, man, I have a few in mind now, but that was one of them. It was God just dropping a word, you know, a couple words in my spirit, my message matters. He gave me a few words in a season where I was really seeking, diligently seeking God about what he would have me to do next. And he gave me three words. And at the time that he gave me those three words, it for me was simply it was enough to feed my faith to continue. That's all it was initially. And within you know a couple months, God began to you know, just develop that in me. And, and I realized that my entrepreneurial journey, I felt like in a way it was God calling me to just feed and pour into people who have an entrepreneurial spirit um, and, and by establishing or launching the, the conference tour, bringing people together under the premise that we can learn from each other each other. We can grow with each, support each other. We can help push each other forward. Um, and, and that's where my message matters was launched. But we set out to do, you know, four city tour. Uh, we went to Jacksonville, Florida, Houston, Texas, Savannah, Georgia. Back in 2018, we did three cities. Uh, in 2019, we did Houston, Texas, Jacksonville, Florida. And last year, due to COVID, we showed up virtually um, and we invited everybody. Right. But it's been a wonderful journey. God has, he continues to show himself mighty. Um, and for me, it was, it was pivotal, pivotal or a defining moment because I thought hosting or excuse me, I thought having a business was, would teach you about yourself. You know, like when you do, when you start creating stuff, you get to see yourself in a way you, you've never seen yourself, right? You get to see all of your deficiencies. <laughs> yes. You get to see all of that, right? And, and so when I did My Message Matters, it was like 
that on a hundred, you know, <laughs> because when I launched the vision for my message matters, all I had was what God gave me. I didn't have resources. I didn't have, you know, money. I didn't have connections. I didn't have a lot of stuff, but I had a word from God and I launched out and we did that tour and businesses have been birthed. Nonprofit organizations have been launched. Books have been written. People have established speaking platforms at My mm -hmm. Message Matters. People who never spoke publicly, they now have a public speaking um, resume because of My Message Matters, you know? And I, I look back on that and I know that it was a God ordained vision from the start. And it really helped me to see what it looks like I mean, see an example, real life example of what it looks like to step out on faith. And all you really have is what God gave you and you and you're trusting him in the step for the rest. So if there is someone that's tuning in right now mm -hmm. and they're straddling the fence in their journey, in the midst of their transition, mm -hmm. and they believe that they have a word from God, mm -hmm. but they're straddling. Do I move forward in this? Do mm -hmm. I not? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What would you say to that individual that's tuning in right now? People straddling the fence. So before I go there, I want to just say hello, my friend Amy. What's up, Amy? <laughs> I was trying to look at the phone to see how to reply to comments, but I just wanted to give a shout out real quick. Um, so going back to your question, Michelle, you mentioned what would I say to people straddling the fence, right? Um, I, I think, him, you know, it's a it's a normal thing to feel conflicted. Yes. It is normal because you mm -hmm. have to realize when God drops something in your spirit, you know, that is a spiritual thing, but you, ha you have a, you still have your experience. You're filtering that through your experience. You're filtering that through your history, what you've been able to do so far. You're filtering that through um, what you believe is possible. Like it's, it's going through all of those layers, right? So standing on the fence and like, okay, do I step forward or not? I think you give yourself grace in that, that the, the sense of, com you know, having some conflict about it, right? You give yourself grace with that. But I would say to anybody listening, you know, people who are believers and God has dropped something in your spirit, he's giving you a vision to do something. Trust God. Trust God. I know that might show up for everybody a little bit differently, but you know, you know, having faith without faith, you can do nothing, right? But you have to be able to exercise your faith, even if you have mustard seed faith, even if you got a little bit of faith, and that might look like in your day-to-day -day activity, it might look like receiving that vision and researching something. It might look like reaching out to someone, right? Who's connected to that vision. I think when God gives you a vision, he's really not looking for you to be the ideal candidate by man's standards. Come on somebody, because if that were true, he would have never given me the vision for my message matters, right? <laughs> he wouldn't have given it to me because he's not looking for you to be, you know, the ideal candidate for something. God qualifies the called. He called me to it and it's God's business to qualify me. And that's why we were able to execute something. And he will give you what to do. He will give you the steps. He will give you the resources. He will align you with the right people. Um, and you have to trust that God is so great. He's infinite in wisdom and he would not waste a vision on you. Come on. He would not drop it in your belly if you were not capable. Look, I, even though I walked through the process of launching that and feeling very inadequate at times, again, looking at my resources, looking at my history, I'm like, OK, how will make this happen? But I never lost hope. I never lost faith in what God could do outside of me. And right. I was willing to surrender to to the fact that God was bigger than me. And I'm going to tell you, when I did that conference tour, I had, I mean, just supernatural favor 
I mean, mm -hmm. from so many directions. I had things given to me, gifted to me. I had people just seeding and pouring. I had people coming along to help. People I hadn't known before. They just saw me busy doing what God told me to do. And then God moved on people's hearts along the way. So I'll say that to you, taking that as an example. Sometimes yeah. God is all he's looking, all he's really looking for you to do is trust that he knows what he is doing. And when yeah. he gave it to you, when that thing hits your belly in spirit form, in seed form, everything connected with the seed hits your belly at the same time. Yeah. You may not see the manifestation right away, but everything connected to the your ability to realize that dream is already connected to the dream. Well, it's already it's all it's all within. All he needs already is there. All yes. Needs is, yes. <laughs> and he said yes. And so what I'd like you to leave our, our listening audience with is a call to action. Um, mm -hmm. And then I'll kind of sum it up, you know, some of the things that you've said mm -hmm. that, have, that have stood out. And, um, you know, for those tuning in, if you want to know more about what Lindsay is doing, make sure that you um, go to the website, tapwriting.com. It's scrolling across the bottom of the screen on the banner. And reach mm -hmm. out and connect with Lindsay if anything she has said resonated mm -hmm. with you and you feel that fire burning within, answer the call and answer the chart. And so Lindsay, what is a call to action? Call to action. I urge everyone to, you know, kind of first and foremost, take care of yourself, you know, uh, again, with thinking through being reset and allowing God to transform your life, that taking care of yourself is so important. And you've got to build that into your life routine taking care of yourself. I urge you to do that. It, it might look good to spread yourself in and to stretch yourself out and to be here and to be there and show up at every event and, you know, dial, you know, you can't be everywhere all the time doing everything. So take care of yourself, create some boundaries in your life. Um, and I urge you to live, you know, authentically be yourself. Look, people are not trying to, you know, look, it's hard for you to serve who you are called and anointed and purpose to serve if you are not being you. If you are not being the authentic version of you, if you're not willing to do that unapologetically, they can't even hear you. Your words won't resonate with them. Your words will feed their soul if you're not willing to show up and be you and do that authentically and unapologetically. And the last thing I'll say in terms of a call to action is to do you God's way. OK. <laughs> and, and when I say do you God's way, I remember that something years ago I, I used to say that often, but it's coming back around. Do you God's way. That means do what it is that God has called you to do. Do you. And do it God's way, you know, making sure that you are checking in with the father, that you're receiving instructions with the father. If that's your business, if it's to launch a business, if it's to write a book, if it's to start a movement, do you God's way. Hallelujah. And when you do it God's way, you don't have to apologize. When you do what God put in your spirit to do, you don't have to go and try to um, explain that away to everybody who will misunderstand and misunder and misinterpret your way of being. When you do that God's way, well, you do it his way and you let people be people and they have a right to an opinion and they have a right to see you and your voice not be for them. Hallelujah. But at least you'll be good with the father. Right. I want to share with you. And that is a wonderful way to go out mm -hmm. strong with that strong word. You guys have, have, have heard the call to action. And so I implore you to answer the call. Um, so Ms. Amy Davis, um, hi, Amy, how are you doing? Has said that listening to you, God is doing the same thing for her in a way, but for the rebuilding of her home after um, it was hit by Hurricane Michael. So you really connected and resonated with her today. And um, she is a friend of mine. So I'm glad that she was able to tune in. And so just as a recap, you know, again, thank you so much, Lindsay, for coming on and sharing these mm -hmm. nuggets of wisdom that you've shared for those tuning in. And some of the things that really resonated with me in your journey for the reset as we continue in 2021. Um, know that rewriting the narrative of what's possible is possible, as yes. Miss um, Lindsay yes. has said, and don't be afraid and don't be concerned about 
or feeling guilty about letting go of relationships with faulty foundations. Mm-hmm. And feed yeah. your faith. Yeah. And last but certainly not least, mm-hmm. know mm-hmm. that God qualifies the call. Mm. Faith that's not tested cannot be trusted. And oh, so I want to thank you all again for tuning in to another ses- segment of Michelle Speaks with a Z. If you hide it, you can't heal it. You guys be sure to look out for the replay and the takeaways and share them with those in your sphere of influence. And make sure you go and check Miss Lindsay out at tapwriting.com. And if you're looking to share your message, connect with her about My Message Matters. If you're looking to publish your book, start your book and need help along the way, reach out to her regarding the author's pen. You will not be disappointed. And so without further ado, I just want to thank you all again for tuning in. And until Mm -hmm. next time, remember this, that Mm -hmm. healing is a journey. It is Mm -hmm. not a destination. Take care. Be well. And God bless. God bless you.